I think the worst thing about caring what others think of you is that belief that whatever they think of you must in some way or another be true. While this works wonderfully for praises and compliments, when it comes to unpleasant opinions, it can make you feel so uncomfortable or even hurt that you then spend days thinking, what was it that caused this opinion? How could you change this opinion? And how could you create a version of you that will always be liked, loved, and never judged? Spoiler alert, you can't. But luckily, you don't need to. There is an easier and more rewarding way to not get affected by what others think of you. So let me take you through this journey so that by the end, you no longer worry. How do you like my little rhyme? I really, I put a thought into it. And make sure to stick till the end because I saved the best for last. Now, the first thing I wanna ask you is, are you a people pleaser? Now, I used to think that a people pleaser is a person who will neglect their own feelings or plans just to make the other person happy. So I thought, I'm not a people pleaser. I put myself first until I remembered my childhood and also realized that it's not so much about what you do, but how you feel when you do what you do. Let me give you an example. Let's say a family member asks you to do something for them, but for whatever reason you're unable to, so you say, no, you can't. But then you feel really bad about it. Technically, you didn't neglect your plans, but you still worry about what the other person will think. It's almost like you see other people's emotions as your responsibility. I used to absorb the emotions of my family members and uh, actually felt scared and really uncomfortable to say no to them, even if that meant putting my own plans or whatever I, you know, was planning to do for myself aside. That caused this little trauma in me of tasks and work is more important than self time, like self care and just me time. And this little trauma has now kind of continued with me in my adult life and still causes this little thinking of, oh, I must make everyone feel good around me. I must make everyone happy and super comfortable. And if they don't feel that way, it's my fault. It's my responsibility. The way other people feel is my responsibility. Now, that being said, I have come a long, long way. Before you try to make yourself a person that doesn't care what others think of you, I want you to first and foremost heal that people-pleasing child of yours. I mentioned that I've come a long way, and by that I mean I have implemented several things little techniques and tips in my life that have helped me. So I want to share those things with you. Number one, set healthy boundaries. Be very clear on what those boundaries are. What are you okay with emotionally and physically? What makes you happy, unhappy? And what is crossing the line for you? So that is number one. Number two, stand up for yourself. If you are strict with your boundaries and clearly state that this is how it is, the other person will learn to respect that. Also, there's a big chance that they would have respected that years ago if only you had told them how you feel. And number three, stop making excuses. This is so, so important. You do not need to give 10 sentence explanations why you can do something. You do not need to say sorry after every second word. You can just simply say, sorry, I can't. And then if the person asks, but why, why can't you do this? You can say, I have plans. That is it. Obviously, you can always give, you know, a little bit more explanation if you want to, but really, truly, you don't need to. I have this need, I feel this need to give these long explanations of why I can't do something and I have this and that, and it is unnecessary. You have to have that respect for yourself and respect your time and be okay with just saying, sorry, I can't. The thing is, I think most people are kind and understanding. We just lack in communication skills. So work on these three 
and try to banish that people-pleasing child of yours. Part two, learn to love yourself truly and deeply. With that love will come comfort, support, care, and confidence. You have to feel like a badass bee. Do you think a badass cares what others think of them? No, they know their truth and they know their worth. Why would I care what John or Jenna think of me if I know in my heart who I truly am? The more confident you feel and the more love you give to yourself, the less you will bend to fit other people's narratives and the less you will care what they think or say about you. The reason why you care currently so much about what others will think of you is because deep down, you don't think you're enough the way that you are. So here are my my top three ways how you can practice that self-love. Number one, be kind. In a world where everything and everyone is constantly criticized, I mean, we criticize and we're being criticized, what you desperately need is to hear those kind words from yourself and to accept those kind actions towards yourself. As I like to say, fake it till you make it. Even if you don't believe the words you're saying, still say them. Give compliments to yourself, give praises to yourself, and most importantly, allow yourself to be human. And the key word is allow. You're human. Stop thinking or acting like you're a robot. It's okay to feel in different ways and it's okay to go through different journeys. You still need that love and you still need that kindness. Number two, know that you don't need to love your reality in order to love yourself. I want to read you a quote by Dr. Adia Gooden, who's a clinical psychologist, and I, I love this quote. When we realize that perfection is not the prerequisite to being loved by other people or loving yourself, we can begin to practice self-acceptance and maybe, eventually, self-love. When you think of the people you love in your life, it has nothing to do with perfection or one single quality. You love them because they're them and no one is like them. Even when they do something annoying or they go through their own struggles, you still love them. They're your people. Whatever changes you're going through currently in your life, even if you're at a place which you don't like and you wanna climb out of that place, I promise you that it will be much easier to do all of that stuff if you love yourself, if all of the actions are coming from a place of love. And just because you accept yourself does not mean you need to accept your reality. And this last sentence is something that I truly had to learn myself. When I was about 12 or 13, and that's that horrible age when, you know, your hormones are like going crazy and you're growing up and your body is changing. And I remember thinking that I wanted to be fitter. I was talking to my mom and she said, you need to learn to love yourself the way that you are. And I remember very clearly saying to her back, well, if I learn to love myself and accept myself, I will never want to change. And I couldn't have been more wrong. I think this is something a lot of self-haters want to believe in. Like, you know, I, I need to hate this aspect in me a little bit because then I will want to change. No. It got so much easier to become healthier, to train, once I learned to love myself the way I am, because then every single action I did, every single choice I made, was coming from a place of, I care for myself, I love myself. I feel like it's the greatest lie told that you need to hate a part of yourself in order to change that. So really, really remember this, you do not need to accept your reality, in order to accept yourself. And number three, find your purpose. What gives meaning to your life? What gives you joy? What motivates you? What inspires you? Your purpose does not need to be this grand thing. It can be anything that gives meaning to you and your life. Finding your purpose can make you fall in love with yourself even more because that will help you see value and meaning in the things that you do. 
For example, currently in my life, two things gives me purpose. One, growth. I love to grow physically, mentally, spiritually. I pick up a new challenge almost every month. I'm learning a new language. I love to grow. It gives my life purpose. And number two, maybe you can guess, creating content. I love to share my thoughts. I love to edit. I love to give something out to the world. And these two things enrich my life and make me feel just more proud of the person that I am. So if there's anything else that you have found that helps you love yourself even more, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know. But if not, try to implement these three and see how and if your life changes. But now let's move on to the third and final part. Part three, the most important part and why you clicked on this video. I want you to ingrain in your brain this one thing and remember it forever. Other people's opinions change absolutely zero about who you are. While words are powerful, your choice to give them power is even more powerful. I'll say that again. And I want you to say this to yourself every single time you get offended or hurt by someone else's comments. Other people's opinions change absolutely zero about who I am. While words are powerful, my choice to give them power is even more powerful. They can only affect me if I allow it. Say it once, say it twice, say it thousands of times until it is so deeply ingrained in yourself that when you hear a comment or an opinion that's kind of unpleasant, your brain automatically says these words back to you. Because the things you say and think to yourself subconsciously are the things that you believe in. And if you believe that other people's opinions are worth zero, then you're free. You are free. Let me know if there's another tip or anything else you've heard about that can help you not give a damn about what other people think of you. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video valuable and I will see you next time. Bye.